This is Captain David Roach, born in Dublin in 1729, the youngest son of James Roach, a barrister. His father died when he was young and his mother remarried and moved to England, leaving her son in Dublin. He spent the next few years as part of a notorious gang until he was involved in the murder of a watchman and had to flee the country. Making his way to America, he fought in the Anglo-French wars, first with the French and then with the British. This period of history was portrayed in the award-winning 1992 film The Last of the Mohicans. Initially well regarded, he was commissioned an officer and won the favour of his commander, Colonel Massey. But after he was accused of stealing a valuable fouling gun from a fellow officer, he was court-martialed and dismissed. Roach, who protested his innocence throughout, was so incensed that he challenged his accuser, a Corporal Burke, to a duel, and on being refused, suddenly sprang at him and, quote, fastened on his throat with his teeth and before he could be disengaged, nearly strangled him. So as they pulled Roach off the corporal, Roach took a bite from the corporal's neck and was quoted as saying, "'Twas the sweetest morsel I ever tasted. From then on, he was known as Tiger Roach." Roach returned to England and applied for an army commission, but found that his crime had preceded him. Declaring that he would fight anyone who doubted his innocence, he fought two duels with a Captain Campbell who he suspected of spreading the news of his court-martial, and once with his old commander, Colonel Massey. Meanwhile, Corporal Burke had been mortally wounded by a Native American scalping party, and Roach's name was cleared through Burke's deathbed confession, when Burke admitted the theft. Roach returned to Dublin entirely vindicated. Dublin was at this time infested with criminals known as Pink and Dindies. One evening, Roach happened to single-handedly rescue an old gentleman and his son and daughter from a gang of such attackers on Ormond Quay. This gave him the idea of forming a body consisting of officers and others of his acquaintance to patrol Dublin at night, further enhancing his heroic status. So the Pink and Dindies would break off the tops of their swords in order to inflict a much more serious wound on their victims. In 1763, with the war at an end, the size of the army was reduced and Roach was forced to retire. He moved to London, where he soon lived beyond his income. In order to repair it, he managed to elope with a Miss Pitt, who had a fortune of £4,000, approximately $850,000 in today's money. On anticipation of his fortune, Roach engaged in a series of extravagances that accumulated debts. He was arrested and cast into the King's Bench prison, where Miss Pitt then left him and he had so many debts were laid upon him that it seemed unlikely that he would ever go free. However, a legacy left him by a relation enabled him to escape confinement. So in St. James's Park, London, two men approached Tiger with the intent of robbing him with pistols. Both men were armed with pistols. One of them fired at Tiger, hitting him in the temple. Tiger drew his sword and took on both men, disarming one of them and making a citizen's arrest of the other. According to one commentator, quote, he regarded swords no more than knitting needles and pinked every man he faced in combat. So pinking is the principle of drawing blood from an opponent, not necessarily a mortal wound, but just enough to draw blood. In fact, modern fencing equipment is traditionally colored white in order to show up any pinking or bleeding for safety reasons. Later, he married another heiress, Elizabeth Jefferson of Cambridgeshire, Having run through her fortune, Roach enlisted as a captain in the East India Service and sailed on a Vanessart in May 1773. On board, he grossly offended a group of passengers and was challenged to a duel by a Captain John Ferguson. Two days later, after the Vanessart had arrived in Cape Town, Ferguson was found dead with nine sword wounds in his side. Suspicion fixed on Roach, who fled during the night on the 3rd of April 1774, he was shipwrecked off Bombay and arrested for murder. He was shipped back to London and his trial was heard at the Old Bailey on the 9th of December 1775. The jury, after being directed to acquit or condemn for murder, but not to bring a charge of manslaughter, took 45 minutes to return a verdict of not guilty to loud cheers from the gallery. The East India Company, however, immediately dismissed him from its service. Roach lived for a further four years 
and did not mend his ways, he emerged unscathed from several more duels, and while attempting to claim the title, Viscount Fermoy became ill and died in Westminster on the 11th of September, 1779, age 40. Other versions of the story would have you believe that he did travel to India and was never heard of again. Barry Lyndon is a 1975 period drama written, directed and produced by Stanley Kubrick, based on the 1844 novel The Look of Barry Lyndon by William Makepeace Thackeray. This film stars Ryan O'Neill and it won four Oscars at the 48th Academy Awards. The film recounts the early exploits and later unravelling of a fictional 18th century Irish rogue and opportunist who marries a rich widow to climb the social ladder and assume her late husband's aristocratic position. Thackeray, who based the novel on the life and exploits of the Anglo-Irish rake and fortune hunter Andrew Robinson Stoney, cannot ignore the parallels with the life of Tiger Roach, which some have suggested must have run through parts of Thackeray's story. Thank you for watching, but please like and subscribe, as this will encourage future productions.